Right, so I'm gonna do the water effect that I did on the underwater page, because I know a few of you guys were enjoying that. Um, and you'd requested me to, um, to do a tutorial, so I'm thinking we can kill two birds with one stone with this one. So with the 90% cool grey, I'm gonna use this one to add some initial shadows towards the base of this water area and where this um, tree stump is. So with this one, I'm just adding a very gentle layer of shadow in towards the bottom here. I'm using the cool grey rather than the warm grey because we're gonna be using blues for the water, so we don't want warm greys, we want a cooler grey. So I'm just gonna add a little bit there we go i'm not going to go too overboard with this gray i just want enough to give a bit of shadow at the bottom so i'm going in now with the peacock blue so this is number 1027 so again we're in prismacolor premiere this time and i'm actually going to gently go over the top of this gray with this blue right i'm also going to put a little bit of this darker blue just underneath the base of this boat. I'm not going to go too mad with it under here because I don't want it to be sort of dark and dark. But just enough. I think I'll add more shadows in as I've got some of the other layers done. I think I'm going to leave this, this black line. I'm not going to do anything with this. I'm going to leave it as it is quite happy for it to look like a little dish. Right. So with this muted turquoise this gives quite a good transition into using slightly lighter blue so I'm going to go over with this one now. So this is number 1088. So I'm just using a nice light hand at the moment so I'm barely touching the page with this just enough really to sort of blend these other two together and then give me a bit of a transition colour between this and the light aqua. So just integrating this with that peacock blue layer really really gently it just softens the edges off when you're going to be going on with a much lighter colour. So some light aqua now so this is 992 I'm using my new one because my old one's about that big and in a pencil extender. So I've dug my new one out. So what I'm going to do with this, I'm pressing quite a bit harder now. So you can hopefully see by putting this muted turquoise over, when you integrate it with this light aqua, it actually turns it into a really, really nice colour. So this is going to be much lighter around this area so I'm just going to sort of taper off with a bit of lighter pressure and I'm going to come back to this bit and rework it. If you use reasonably hard pressure to sort of smush these bottom layers together. The very first colour I used Cora was 90% uh, cool grey. Then we went with peacock blue over the top and then a little bit of muted turquoise. Let's just taper this off slightly because we're going to be reworking some of this anyway. And then I am going to use some white gouache just for sort of bubbles and, and bits, but that will be one of the last things that I do. I probably won't do that today. I need to get the, the ship and everything painted up first. I'm going to go straight to the, the edge here and integrate this sort of going backwards now. So again, nice and light at the edge. And then colouring a bit more like I mean it the further down I go. Sort of ease off under here. Hiya Rashna. Don't worry, you haven't missed much. So let's get these couple bits blended under this 
little chap. Hi Emily. This is the light aqua that I'm using at the moment, Palmy. Hi Vicky. So carry on getting these um, little bits under here sorted. Oh, don't worry Debbie, you can watch it on replay. Um, I don't always start with the darkest colour, it depends um, what effects I'm trying to do with it being shadows um, under the water here. It's a little bit easier to put the darker layers down and blend over them because you can always retouch. It's really hard to sort of lighten something up if you've gone in a bit too heavy handed the, the wrong way around if that makes sense. So under here just going to start working in with it still with the same colour it's probably will add a little more shadow in under here but that'll be one of the sort of last things that I end up doing under here so I'm just going to sort of vary so that we don't have two lines I'm just going to vary a little bit where I'm going to with the the colour under here I'm just going to take it over this little guy and then start introducing some sort of other little areas of a different colour which I will pull out of my pencil pot in a second. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to be interspersing with some bits of this light green colour. So this is 920 light green. So I'm going to be interspersing between these two now.
So I'm going to kind of disregard the fact that there would be a part of a boat here because what I'm going to do is use the um, white gouache to make some sort of wave type effects and under here I am going to colour the boat in but I'm going to try and get some of the blue onto it as well so I am going to be leaving little bits of this until next week when we go ahead and do the boat. So it's going to look a little bit bizarre at the moment but I'm just going to go with it. Right, so you guys will have seen um, me use this before. This is a Derwent battery operated eraser, which you can just use to lift bits of the pigment off. So this is where my desk looks like an absolute war zone because this is particularly violent. Um, it just pings the stuff everywhere. Really bizarre. Right, I'm just gonna clean actually off the tip before I start on the lighter colors. So I've just cleaned off the tip there so that, because basically what it will, it will do is if you've got some of this darker stuff, it will um, sort of mark what you're doing up here. And I'm just gonna press really, really lightly and use this just to remove. So I'm kind of doing lines like this, which I know is sort of difficult for you to sort of see. So I'm not pressing very hard because I don't want to completely erase everything that I've done, but I just want there to be some little areas of slightly lighter. Look at the state of this, honest to goodness, it's gone absolutely everywhere. Just carry on lifting some of this up. So I will do a little bit under here again, but I'm not going to go sort of too mad. Right, so back in with this peacock blue. So what I'm doing is I'm kind of disregarding where I've lifted off some of the pigment and just really gently, I'm gonna add in and I'm gonna add some of this darker blue in in some of the other areas. So you can hopefully just about see where I've lifted the pigment away with the eraser. So just around these areas. I'm just going to add a little of this colour back in and even under some of these areas where I didn't have the peacock blue originally I'm just going to really gently add some of this.
then I'm going to go back in with this light aqua colour which I was using before. And this is where you can just soften some of those edges of the other blues that you've put down. And it kind of blurs it out rather than having these harsh lines everywhere. So I'm a really, really soft hand and all I'm doing is little circular movements like this just to blend the edges. It just blurs them very, very slightly. If I, if I zoom in a bit more, if that will be helpful. Let me see if I can do this without killing the whole thing. That might be a bit easier for you guys to see. <sighs> Bits everywhere. So where, where was I? I was down here, wasn't I? So if you just use a really, really gentle hand, you can just blur. And like here, where there's a really harsh blue line, I'm actually going to use that non-photo blue for this one. If you just add... Is that what it means, Nikki? I never knew that. I need a different word. So I'm just going to blur over the edge where I've erased. And like down here as well, because this bit is a little bit darker, I'm going to use this true blue one just for this little bit down here. And I'm just going to blur the edge there. And I'm Honestly, I'm pressing so lightly, you wouldn't believe. Just to blur these lines slightly. And in fact, I'm just gonna lift a little more of that pigment down here. Just want a bit more contrast between the blue and the green. So with, with this, you can sort of erase um, sort of multiple times. When I did the, the, the big sort of underwater picture, I did a lot of this um, sort of erasing and then re-adding colour again. And it worked quite well. So let's do some work towards the top now. So back with the non-photo blue. So I'll add in... Yeah, that's what I thought it meant as well, Nikki. I didn't realise that it, it meant what the... Maybe the dictionary's wrong. Let's just say the dictionary's wrong. <laughs> so funny. And then I think what we'll do is we'll add um, a little bit of this blue above this guy. So we have an erased line here, which you can probably just about see. So I'm just going to follow that around. And then here as well, this bit's been erased. So I'm just going to soften that. I suppose the dictionary must be right, which is why my dad used to say to me, will you stop faffing about? So I'm just going to break up some of this lighter area. Add a little hint of blue in there. And then I'm going to go back with this light aqua colour. And just use that to soften these edges a little and then we go back on with the green again. And then back on with the green. I'm just going to soften the edges of this bit. So you can just about see there where we've got multiple layers going on. And the erasing, it just, with you building around the shapes, it just gives it a little bit of movement. So then um, with this grey-green light, sorry, that's terrible to show you. There you go, I've just about got it under the camera there. 
So this 289 grey green light. What I'm going to do with that is these areas where I've actually left the sort of erased lines. I'm just softening over those edges now and pulling those bits of colour together with this one. So this is a bit like the overblend layer which you guys see me do on other things when I say overblending. That's what I'm doing here. Overblending slightly and pulling these few different colours together. Coffee? Yes. Yes. One. No, you can't make everyone a coffee. <laughs> Catherine off to put the coffee pot on. Brilliant. There we go. Right, let's just get rid of some of these bits. So I'm going to go in with the true blue a little bit and just darken this bit of a shadow line just along the top here. So where I've used that grey green light over the top, we can add this over. Yes, please, says Jamie. <laughs> I'll get her on it. <laughs> She's so good. She said to me, I'll, I'll go and get us both a coffee at like five o'clock. It's like, you do that. <laughs> She's so good. So again, um, oh, thanks, Gina. These are the same colours um, that I'm just cycling that I've already told you about. So I'm just using that to blend over. You've just refilled your cup, Alexandra. Wowzers. So let's have a little look at this middle area. So back on with the true blue. So I'm just going to add a sort of ghost of this around the edge here, which I'm going to blend out anyway. And then I think we'll carry on with a little more of it under here as well. And then down here, so I'm going back to my peacock blue, which is one of the colours you'll remember from the start where I was making these shadows. And I'm just going to tidy up underneath these guys. And then let's go back on with true blue. So I'm just going to use that to just soften the edges a little. Probably need to do some ink in there as well actually, it's a little bit too green. Let's just rework a bit of blue under here. Because I'm sure he would have a little more shadow underneath him. If indeed he is a him, he might be a her, who knows. Let's just tickle a little bit of blue in down here as well because we've got too much of a, a, of a green blob here. This is what I mean about keep reworking areas. And I think what I'm going to do is I'll use this grey green light just to blend that in so we haven't got such a harsh transition line. Yeah, I love coffee as well, Jamie. There is no me functioning in this world if I haven't got coffee. It just doesn't happen. Right, where were we before I got rudely interrupted by a big green area that I hadn't put in enough <laughs> blue into? So back to the true blue. God, I bet you guys love how erratic these sessions are, seriously. Ah. I can never just come on and just colour something straight. I always have to come on and mess around with it. So let's pop a little bit of blue under here as well. Maybe just a little touch under here. The only day you have two cups is Sunday with me. Oh my God, 
I hope that's not because you need two cups to get through one of these tutorials. That would be a real shame. <laughs> so back to the non-photo blue. Last Sunday you were replaying the houses. Oh, I can't tell you how glad I was to finish that page. Oh my days. I felt like I've been at it for ages. Ages and ages. But I'm loving the Chris Cheng that I'm in the middle of at the moment. If you guys haven't had a look at that this particular video yet, and you haven't got a plan for that particular page of this book, it is well worth a look. So good. So, so good. Right, let's add a little bit under this guy's tail. So I'm going back on with the light aqua again. So I'm just going to use this to just soften a couple of these edges. A relaxing time after a week at work. Oh, that's good. And then the light green again. So again, we're just cycling the colours you've already seen me use. So again, we just blur the edges slightly. Still leaving these little blobs of a colour where it's been erased. And then we just use this grey green light as the overblend. So those areas where you have left the erased areas here. You can just pull them in a bit neater if you just go over it with this one. This is quite a good colour for doing this kind of thing with if you're trying to blend out greens or blues and then add something else over the top. If you're using Prismacolors, this is a particularly good pencil because it's neither one nor the other. It's a strange colour, but it's really good as a blending tool. So I'm not going to do anything else to the water today because that's going to be the gouache layer once the boat's done, but I am going to do these fishes. So some of these are quite short, so they're going to have to go into a, an extender. So I've got dark green. I've got some yellow chartreuse. Ah, oh, thanks, Gail. It'll look better with the gouache on top. It's not done yet, but that's not for today. I've got some, a very tiny spring green. And then we've got some grass green as well. Right, so grass green first of all. I'll zoom us back in again so you can see. So I think what we will do is go over his tail. So I'm just going to take this down in a kind of diagonal loop. So I'm pressing harder at the base here. In fact, I'm going to do his little fin at the bottom in that colour as well. And then I'm going to little circular blend in there just to soften the line because we're going to be integrating other colours. So next colour is this spring green. So I can't show you the number because it's now buried in this pencil extender. But spring green is, let me look at my list, number 913 for those of you that want numbers. So what I'm going to do with this one is not quite at the edge, I'm just going to integrate it over the edge here. So we have a nice taper line and then just soften the blend because that's where we're going to add another colour over. And then this yellow chartreuse, this is number 1004. I'm actually going to colour the rest of the fish. And we're going to take this back as an overblend layer over all of the greens. 
So then we have this dark green. So this is number 908. Again, I can't show you that because it's buried in this pencil extender. And I'm going to take this darker green just over the top of the grass green on this little guy's tail. And then nice and gently, I'm going to add this along the bottom edge of this guy here. Right back on with grass green again. Why were we talking about chocolate? Was that when I was doing the rocks? It must have been when I was doing that stonework. I'm just trying to think why I would be saying that in a colouring colouring tutorial. So again, I'm just tickling the surface and then back to the spring green again, just to soften that line. Right, so permanent red, so number 122. So let's do a slightly different blend on this on this chap. Right, so um, pale vermilion next time, so this is number 921. So we're just going for it. the same really basic colour graduation blend. So some lemon yellow now, this is number 915. So I'll colour his little face in with the yellow. Oh, the biscuits aren't sweet. That would make more sense. I mean, we do have savoury scones um, here, but we certainly wouldn't put gravy on them. Um, I'm going to have to look that up, Gail. That's got me really fascinated. God, the things we talk about when I'm colouring. So funny. So now I'm going to use this very, very short crimson red. So this is number 924. Excuse me. So I'm going to add that over the permanent red on the end of his tail. And then just add a little hint of this over the top. And then back to the permanent red again. And I'm just softening these lines over the top. And then the same again with the, the vermilion colour just into the yellow. So it's just a slightly different colour blend on this one. So you know that I like my um, Uniball Signo pen, so I've actually got the broad tip one and I've actually got a, th a thinner one as well. I don't think it's dead massively obvious that they are a different size, but they really, really are when you're using them. So I think I'm actually going to use the fine tip um, for what I'm wanting to do on here. So I treated myself to some new pens because as you'll know from the last few lives, my um, white pens haven't been working particularly well and um, that's been getting me slightly irritated. So I am just going to test this on a bit of paper even though I know that it is working. So with the white pen, I just want to make them look a little bit more sort of gemmy looking. So all I'm going to do is just add a little bit of a white line on these guys. So if I just zoom in, so this one is the 
um, thinner tip, you know, ball signo. Take care, Alexandra. And then obviously, if you were going to do little dots, that's sort of how fine you can get them with that pen. This one is the, the broad tip, which would have been too big for these little fish. And that's the sort of dots. I think if you were, yeah, even if I pressed very lightly, there's a massive difference between the, the two lots of dots. So hopefully you can see the difference there. So I'm gonna use these two. So green and gold. This is in the, um, the normal um, hybrid set. I've lost my words now, I need another sip of coffee. One second. Right. What I might do is just add just along the bottom edge here. <laughs> oh, so funny. Just add a little bit. 4 pm UK time on a Sunday usually between four and six, depending how much time um, we've got and everything. So next week will be the, the boat or as much as, of the boat as I can in the time that we've got. But yeah, great to see you all. Thank you for your company. I'm gonna disappear now and go and spend some time singing Hammer Time in private. <laughs> so take care you guys. Right, I'm gonna take